almost instantaneously when Stay at Home was issued, there were a lot of marine canvas shops like us that were immediately you know, calling each other to say, how do we utilize our sewing skills to switch to PPE? Today on the program, we have Kat C from Oyster Creek Canvas, and they're doing some really cool things in the community, partnering with other organizations to provide some essential protective equipment for our frontline workers and essential workers in the general population. Kat, thanks for being here today and being a part of this program. Yeah, thank you for doing this. So Kat, let's just start with, if you wanted to leave someone with one thing that they should take away from what they see in this interview, what would you want them to, to walk away from knowing? I guess the input that we've received has been from a lot of larger businesses that are trying to get their staff covered, not necessarily just healthcare workers, but for example, this week, construction companies um, and other businesses. Basically, we just want them to know that there's a local source for washable, reusable PPE. I mean, that's the main takeaway here is that we're just trying to provide these reusable masks to the, to the general public, um, to businesses, of course, to healthcare providers, anybody who needs one, because it has been difficult for a lot of people to source. It's not just sourcing things like N95s, um, but even sourcing cotton masks. Oftentimes people are seeing long wait times uh, from online ordering, things like that. Yeah. So can you describe a little bit about how you've pivoted your business and some of the things that you have been providing for people? I mean, almost instantaneously when Stay at Home was issued, there were a lot of marine canvas shops like us nationwide, uh, worldwide, that were immediately, you know, calling each other to uh, and, you know, using online forums and this kind of thing to say, how do we utilize our sewing skills to switch to PPE? So it's pretty instantaneous in the textile industry and specifically, you know, the marine canvas industry. So uh, we took a little bit of time to regroup figured out how we could best serve our clients. For us, it was a unique situation because unlike a lot of businesses that are really struggling with just an immediate loss of revenue or loss of customers, um, we actually have you know two months of marine work waiting in the wings that we aren't allowed to do. So it's a completely different situation for us. You know, We book um, long lead times year round because it's custom work. So that, that was a good thing to have in our back pocket, but the state wasn't going to allow us to do that work. Um, and we also didn't feel great about bringing staff back to do non-essential work anyway. So um, in looking into how we could help with PPE, you know, almost immediately in our community, there were um, p- businesses stepping up to the plate like Superfeet, um, Bellingham Makerspace, and a lot of other groups um, making, you know, the first thing that we heard was being made in mass was face shields and um, the hoods. And so we decided, okay, it seems like businesses have got that covered um, or are, you know, moving in that direction. So we said, what other products can we help fill the need for? And isolation gowns was one that we noticed. It's very difficult for home sewers to sew an isolation gown because A, you know, the, the type of fabric needed really isn't a home type of fabric that you'd have laying around. B, it requires, you know, like two and a half yards of fabric, which is a large amount of fabric compared to a mask. So that was something we started pursuing Uh, We worked with our network of textile professionals to source um, some open source patterns for gowns and to start doing some uh, R&D on some of those patterns to see which ones would work well and which ones we could do as quickly as possible to keep the costs as low as possible. And the same for masks. You know, we basically test ran a bunch of online patterns of masks, you know, and kind of test drove those ourselves to see which ones we liked and which ones we thought would be most universal, but also easiest to produce. Because our goal has always been just to produce as many of these as possible, um, as cheaply as possible and get them out there. How have your employees responded to this? And I understand that you've actually hired some some additional employees just to help meet the demand that you're you're seeing out there. But what are what are your employees feeling when they come to work now? nobody was particularly eager to come back to work. It was a scary feeling to break quarantine. And, you know, you've only seen one, maybe two other people for weeks, but we used kind of a tiered approach where we brought uh, managers back first, and then we brought uh, other team members back slowly um, to try to keep as much distance in the shop as possible. Um, We even kept a couple sewers sewing at home briefly so that they could actually work in quarantine and keep their income going. 
but I think now, you know, now that, especially now that the sort of messy middle is over, the, the R&D phase of this was incredibly challenging to switch production to an entirely new thing, entirely new materials, new distributors, new protocols. Um, you know, it, it can be messy at the beginning. And I think now that we've ironed that out and we're really in production mode, we feel good being at work. I mean, it feels great to be, A, it feels great to not be, you know, by yourself all day long. But B, I think that each of us feels good about being part of this solution and making something that is genuinely helping our community. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really encouraging. And um, I, I guess with, with some of these partnerships that you've developed in the community, I know you've worked with the Food Co-op and with Lithtex and some other organizations locally. Can you talk about what that has been like, seeing different businesses come together to support each other and to support the health of our community? It's really been incredible. I mean, I know you talked to Mary at Bellingham Makerspace um, a few weeks ago, and she's been an incredible resource for just um, information gathering. They, they've been an incredible place to, you know, if you say, hey, I have a skill and I'm trying to connect with the need, they did a great job of sort of consolidating the need by creating an online form where community members were asking for gowns, face shields, masks. And Mary was uh, kind enough to share that with multiple local businesses like us and basically say, hey, look, we want to get all of these covered by donations, but, um, you know, volunteer sewers are limited. You can only produce so many of these on a home machine. And obviously commercial machines are going to be faster, more efficient. So um, basically what we did is we kind of partnered with the makerspace to say, okay, you know, I'll check this same spreadsheet that you're working from and I'll look for orders over 50 um, and see, hey, you know, if these aren't being filled and these people need these immediately, can we take on some of these larger orders so that the donors can focus on, say, orders of two, six, eight, that kind of thing. Um, Lithtex, it was great because we already had a relationship with them previously where uh, our businesses have been working together for a couple of years now um, because the marine industry is really moving towards a lot of automation in cutting. Um, and so we've had our production sewing pieces cut by Lithtex for some years now and had a great relationship with them. So it only made sense and actually, one of the reasons that we were able to switch so quickly is because um, the open source files that were being shared in the textile industry for things like gowns were DXF files that are readable by cutting tables, by, by software for cutting tables like what Lithtex has. And so I could literally just send him a file that already existed, say, cut 100 of these. And it made it so that, again, we could keep the labor down and the price point down and turn these around quicker. That's great. That's fantastic. Just really encouraging to hear hear that and encouraging to see how you've been able to take and and your business has been able to take an approach to keep people working in an essential role, essential capacity and providing a, a great service for our community. Kat, thank you so much for, for being a part of this. Is there anything else that you wanted to, to add that we didn't have a chance to discuss? And we do want to thank the Community Food Cop co-op for being uh, a retailer for individual masks. You know, we are still a small business. And so being able to offer, say, one to two of these masks at a time just isn't possible for us because we're working around the clock to make them. So it's been really wonderful to see um, a business like the co-op just really kind of taking the lead on this and focusing on providing a local product. And it's been really encouraging to see it. You know, they've been selling out each week. So we're trying to keep working towards keeping them stocked because... It's just great to see these masks getting out into the world and and having the support of a, a place like the co-op is a big part of that. Awesome. So if you want a mask, you can go to the, the co-op and they've got your masks there when they're in stock. Yeah. And actually, one, one other thing would be if you are a business um, healthcare provider, first responder, that kind of thing, if you are looking for a wholesale mask order 50 or more, we can fill that directly. Awesome work. Thank you for everything you're doing and keep up the good work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.